November 12th, 2022. Yesterday was the 244th anniversary of the Cherry Valley Massacre here in Cherry Valley, New York. Right now we're looking down onto a swamp over across the road there that was uh, there at the time. I'm going to give you a short synopsis of the first phase of the massacre here. We are standing here in front of what is called Willow Hill. This is the original site of John Lindesay's farm. Then the Wells homestead where the first assault of the massacre occurred. Mr. Wells was married to Reverend Dunlop's daughter. And the Dunlop home is just over that hill in front of us on the other end of town. We're going to start out here. What happened on that day in November of 1778. Give you a little background information on the Battle of Cherry Valley or the Cherry Valley Massacre. On November 6th of that year, the following letter was sent from Fort Schuyler to Colonel Alden. Sirs, we were just informed by an Oneida Indian that yesterday an Onondaga Indian arrived at their castle from one of the branches of the Susquehanna called Tioga that he was present at a great meeting of Indians and Tories at that place, and the result was to attack Cherry Valley, and that young butler was to head the Tories. I send you this information that you may be on your guard. Alden's reply was courteous, but short. In effect, he was obliged by the information. The inhabitants, once again in their homes for the approaching winter, requested permission to remove to the fort, or at least deposit their most valuable property there. Both requests were denied by Alden, adding that the report was probably unfounded. It should be added that the 6th Massachusetts Regiment and its command had no experience of the frontier and therefore lacked the psychological state of mind that had developed in the frontiersmen over the confrontations with disaffected Indians over decades, then with the French as recently as 1763, and now with Tories. The consequences of this would be disastrous. And again, the Wells home here is where this assault took place. So we're looking south now, away from the town of Cherry Valley. But on the night of November 9th, scouts sent down the Susquehanna Valley below Cherry Valley, kindled a fire and lay down to sleep. The fire is discovered, and on the morning of the 10th, the scouts are surrounded and taken prisoner. On the night of the 10th, the enemy encamped on the top of a hill thickly covered with evergreens. During the night, the snow fell several inches. The camp was about a mile southwest of the fort, Fort Alden, which is behind me. I'm going to show you the site there in a few minutes. During the night, the snow fell several inches. In the morning, it turned to rain and in the atmosphere was thick and hazy. Everything favored the approach of the enemy, undiscovered. That fateful day, a Mr. Hamble was coming up that morning from his house, several miles below on horseback, when a short distance from Mr. Wells' house, Mr. Wells' house, right behind us here, Mr. Wells' house, he was fired upon and wounded by the Indians. He rode in great haste to inform Colonel Alden who was lodged here at the Wells home, of their approach, and then hastened to the fort. In short order, the advance body on the rain composed principally of Senecas, and at that time the wildest and most ferocious of the six nations descended upon the Wells homestead. Now this home was not there at the time. This home was built in 1794. But this is the... Uh, the exact site where that home is, and a little bit up here on the right, is the exact site of where the Wells home was at that time. And the Dunlop family was staying there, and Colonel Alden and many of his senior officers were staying here as well. So Colonel Alden made his escape from the house, and he was pursued down the hill toward the fort by an Indian. Now we're going to go out to the site. Now this road, obviously, here, Fish and Game Road, was not here at the time. So he came out of the fort, out of the home, out of the Wells home, which was 
approximately over in that direction there. And he crossed over the fort. We'll see as soon as we get up on this little hill here. All right, so we're gonna turn back south here. The Wells home was right in this area here. We're not sure exactly where it was. It's on this site is where the Wells home was. Colonel Alden being warned of the attack, he took off running up over here. And when that car gets down to that gray car there, is heading to Fort Alden. We can see the little church spire on the left there and the big church spire on the right. Fort Alden is between those two churches. So Colonel Alden, think about Alden, took off running to get to the fort to warn the few officers and the few soldiers who were in the fort and to warn the people what was happening. Now I wanna take a look around here. This old countryside here. This whole countryside was, boy, that was nice. Um, just in snow that night before, as we read, it was raining, it was foggy. The attack took place right at dawn. And this farmland here would soon become a bloody place where over 30 farms were situated throughout the area of Cherry Valley. Now, Colonel Alden took off running and one of the Indians pursued him. Colonel Alden turned with his pistol and fired two shots at the Indian. The Indian grabbed his tomahawk and he immediately threw it at Colonel Alden, striking him in the head and killing him. Then the Indian ran up and scalped Colonel Alden in the approximate area of in this area right here. Now we're gonna head to the Colonel Alden marker in a moment we'll get to that but the markers alongside route 166 here which they put it alongside the road to mark the area but as we look back toward the wells home there on the left the, the area of where it was somewhere in this vicinity here colonel alden was struck and killed now many wondered who that indian was that did that that killed him and it was found out later that it was the great Mohawk captain, Joseph Brandt. And he didn't want to harm Alden. But what happened, he said, was he felt threatened when he was shot at, and he felt he needed to, uh, needed to actually defend himself. We're not exactly sure where the site was where he was struck and killed, but it's in this area between here, and like I say, back there where the Wells house was situated. So next time, in a couple, be right there in just a second here, I'm going to show you where the Colonel Alden marker is. Okay, we're on Route 166 now, looking south. We're up at the end of that little curly road right there on the, in the center of your screen is the White House is the Wells home, the location. We cross over to the west side of Route 166 here, we see the Colonel Alden marker. Now again, look on the hill here between the, the Alden home is this field. Somewhere in that vicinity is where Colonel Alden was killed. It says on the marker, on this spot, Colonel Alden felled, was felled by the tomahawk on the day of the massacre, November 11, 1778. Now, when you say on this spot, many people think it was probably right here, but it probably wasn't. It could have been, we're not exactly sure. They put the marker here because it was so close to the, the highway, the road here. Chances are it was probably up up in that field we just came through. Somewhere in that area there where Joseph Brandt killed and scalped Ichabod Alden, the colonel of Fort Alden. Now we're looking back down the road here. See that traffic light down there? And that pickup truck, that pickup truck, if you can see, is just about where Fort Alden was located. Fort Alden actually went out across the road and it encircled the cemetery, which part of the cemetery is, was there at the time, and many graves have been added since, including the grave of Ichabod Alden. 
So I'm going to end this post here. And we're going to have another post after this at the actual site of Fort Alden.